So today we will have a short overview and introduction in organizational resilience management. Um, what we said it's an integrated GRC approach. Um, so I'm 52 years now, married, have six children, and that's why I'm living in France. Um, because originally I'm, I'm from Germany, but uh, living in Germany with six children is not compliant to, to <laughs> German <laughs> to German culture. Um, it's, it's a risk, yeah, it's a risk. And so, you know, with, with, with a big family like this, so I know a lot of governance of families and uh, risk management and all these things. So, um, I have 30 years or more than 30 years of experience in a couple of, uh, couple of fields, couple of industries. So before I, 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 I went to consulting and about 10 years ago, I worked 20 years on the other side. So that means on, on, on customer side, client side. Um, so for, for a long time in, in big groups like uh, Deutsche Babcock or Babcock Borsig, which no longer exist, and uh, at the end at Total, so it's a French company, it's also the reason why I'm in France now. Um, so uh, originally I uh, studied uh, mechanical engineering, but I never practiced this, uh, so I always started in IT, and then from IT over processes and security strategies, all these things, and uh, so today I'm less on the IT side and more on the process and security side. Uh, yeah, I speak at least three languages. I understand a couple of others um, because also family is international. So my wife is from Ukraine. So it's, uh, I have to understand a little bit of Russian. And uh, yeah, end of today, I'm managing director of Karmau, which is a German-based company. So also a couple of words about Karmau to maybe to understand better than later a couple of things in the presentation. Um, Kamau is a pure consulting firm, so we have no, no relation to products or we don't sell any products in, in security or whatever. Um, the main fields we are consulting is information security, uh, data protection compliance, uh, risk management, of course, um, everything which is around business continuity management and IT service continuity management. Um, we have a part in digital forensics and cyber security. And uh, since last year, we have a new field, which is physical security. So that means data centers and everything which is access control. Um, and uh, we have a part in, in certifications. Certifications there are two parts. So one part is accompanying companies to, to get certified, but we, we are not a certification authority. And uh, we have another part, which is a link to PCB, um, which is uh, training people and uh, getting them certified uh, according to, to the PCB program, which is possible. Um, Kamau is in the market for more than 15 years, and uh, also an old colleague, which is here in the auditorium, which was before at Kamau. Um, in Kamau, we can, we can deal with a pool of uh, around uh, 125, uh, 120 certified consultants. Uh, so, and we are working not only on the German, Austrian, and Swiss markets, so we're also working uh, uh, everywhere where the customer wants us to, to work. So, but now let's begin with what's organizational resilience. Since last year, there's an ISO standard, um, it's uh, 22,316. Uh, 22, which was published and um, there's a definition where they made, they say organizational resilience is organization's ability to anticipate, respond and adapt to unexpected disruptions. Um, so that's a, a general, um, general explanation, which, which um, meets also from our point of view, very, very good this approach. And we ourselves, we are dealing with, with this idea uh, already a, a couple of years, since, since a couple of years. And um, so, yeah, next time. Um, 360 degree view. Um, so uh, then, then we say what, 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 you're, what, what, you can, what we can do or what, what a company should do is to optimize the resilience because every company is doing a little bit um, more, more or less willingly uh, because it's, that's the objective of, of a company to, um, to sustain the market, to resist uh, for, to, to, to external or internal, um, and to, to do the best. Uh, but uh, 
the, 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 the main problem is, is, <coughs> is, is mostly <coughs> there are a couple of measures which, which are in place and maybe a couple of management systems, but they are not really working together. And so uh, seamless integration of all, of all these parts is, is necessary to have a real um, organizational resilience. Um, and so that's uh, why we think uh, you, you need an integrative approach. And um, so that means uh, you have to analyze all, all, the, all the parts and all the connections between, between the different parts of, of measures you, you made in place bet between the different uh, management systems and, and so on, and then to identify the problems which are there. Um, so we will later on see, see how, how, how it works and what, what's, what's, what's behind. Um, and uh, <coughs> to do this in an, in an organized way. Um, so uh, there, there should be a framework so that you have a, a frame around where, where you can move into and, and the parts of the framework is that you have to, to have an organizational model which, which, which you can handle, so which is not too complex and which is not too, 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 too far in detail because otherwise you, you never will have the, the, the measures which, which, are, which are working for your, um, for your organization and which will uh, correspond and, and which will work together and so on. So uh, it's, it's one of the, the base parts, first to have an organization model and then it should be simple. Um, because also a lot of companies don't really have an organization model um, and uh, that's also a problem from the base. Um, and what we think too, it's uh, the, the message should be quite modular because you can't, can't come to every company and come with a big thing and that's, that's a monolithic uh, thing and you have to do it like this. So you always have to take into account in, in, in every company what, what are the specific uh, um, disruptions which which can come which are the um uh what what is it what what are doing in the market what is the size what is the complexity of organization and and all these things and so you can take several modules and uh, for for implementing then a type of uh, organized organizational resilience uh, so the, the the main the central point is that you have a central central information risk engine or central central risk engine in general um because also that's that's one of the problems risk management in in each of the of the measures and then at the, at the very end then you can think also about tools which which you can use to support this and uh, there are already a couple of tools on on the market which which support this this approach in a in a more or less good good way <clears throat> but also don't start with a tool because uh, so we met a couple of companies they, they bought a tool and they said oh so main, 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 uh, now everything is fine and uh, at the end uh, they found out the tool is not matching their requirements and then they have to buy a new tool or the tool is limiting the things and, and things like that so it's it's like always tools are not the solution for 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 anything a solution for nothing mainly <coughs> So, but why, why to think about organizational resilience? <clears throat> so, as everybody knows, organizations are exposed to, to, to several risks from inside, from outside. So, here just uh, some, some examples. Uh, so, uh, you can have process deficits. So, that means your processes don't work in the way that they should. They are not protecting um, your, your company. Um, <clears throat> they're not taking into account any unexpected things. Um, so there are there, missing process steps. All the processes are defined in, in theory, but they are not uh, uh, existing in reality, as, as you know it from the past, uh, from, from the first ISO 9000, uh, 9001 implementation. So you had a big, uh, big wall with, with, uh, with files, and, and everything was fine, and the auditors said everything is fine, but the reality was uh, the complete opposite. So that, that's a problem with, with uh, processes which are, which are not wor working correctly and which are not taking into account uh, uh, a couple of things <clears throat> and another thing is you have sometimes also parallel processes so you have the same process of, now for the same activity you have several processes which are not uh, um, harmonized and so everybody is working with, with his own process more or less so these are all the things which are which could post uh, which could uh, uh, cause problems um <clears throat> then, then another common thing, especially in these days, are all these cyber attacks, which are all over, all over the, the, the newspapers and, 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 and everywhere in the news. Everybody's talking about, <clears throat> even if it's also from 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 my point of view, it's, it's a part of the problem, but it's not it's not the only problem. Uh, so cyber attacks are a problem, and you can this is a risk, and uh, <clears throat> this is another way to. To, to attack a company, but uh, it's not the only one, and you can protect yourself against this. And also, 
then most of the people think protecting against cyber attacks, you may make in place a, a firewall or something like that, and everything is done. And also, because of this this type of thinking, it, which is sort too easy, then then you, you still have risks because you you didn't uh, you didn't um, look at, at all the risks that that that, uh, that are around this. Um, then you, you have risks from system outages. Um, so that means not only IT systems, and not only IT systems, but from from all type of system you use in your in your in your organization. So that could be uh, pr production uh, machines. It could be um, um, tool machines which are not working. So you can't produce your um, your your goods you you want to sell. Um, this could uh, mm -hmm. systems which are outside of your responsibility. So like the I don't know the, the public from from the public telephone companies, uh, the communication systems. So system outages are, are generally a, a lot uh, can can cause a lot of problems, but they are also not. Uh, not always observed, and also companies, a lot of companies think so. I make a contract and everything's fine, but also you have to see what's what's behind. So it's not uh, only a contract. So maybe this can reduce a little bit. Uh, there's a financial impact, but at the end, uh, um, in most of the contracts, uh, there are the penalties you can have are not covering the the real um, <coughs> the real um, loss of, of money you have. Um, and then the things like like fraud and blackmailing, so which can come from inside the company. Mainly, frauding is is a is a problem with mostly from from inside the company, and also, especially in the last six months, there's, there's a couple of we met a couple of companies where, especially on the top management level, there, there was a lot of, of fraud activity, and then sometimes also organized fraud. So there was not only one member of the managing board, so they there was all the managing board, or at least two or three of them, and with a structure inside the company and uh, these are things which are so because <coughs> in in most companies those approaches so our, our people which are work for us are we, we what what is it confident confident yeah and um, so these are confident people and um, so we trust in them and and so uh, they, they neglect uh, every, every risk which is in this and uh, if this is coming from the top it's even worse because then then they're then the, the <coughs> control authorities from from the company have to have to deal with this and and to see how to how to deal with the managing director or a CEO or whatever and uh, it's, a, it's a, a quite a problem and blackmailing is mainly a problem from from outside and also um, currently now from from uh, uh, so it's a IT based blackmailing more or less by by um, Menacing the companies that that they that they will uh, uh, stop or encrypt all the all the IT systems, things like that. <clears throat> um, and so there's, there's a couple 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 of other risks. So, um, but there's no no general risk view on this currently, and the risks are are increasing. So, and also because of this these risks. So, I think you know Allianz. Uh, Allianz is a Originally German-based uh, insurance company, which is worldwide active now, and since I think six or seven years, they are publishing some some things they call risk barometer, um, where they're um, asking I don't know about two thousand five hundred or three thousand companies in eighty countries, eighty countries, yeah, about uh, the risks uh, they they see, and <clears throat> as you can see. Uh, um, <coughs> the risks uh, which which are marked in in bold there, these are risks you can. You can handle, and then you can do some measures against it. So, like business and supply chain interruption, you can uh, you can uh, <coughs> um, preview. No, you can uh, anticipate this, um, and then you can put in, in 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 place some some measures or some plans or some some business continuity plans to to deal with this with cyber incidents. Also, um, natural catastrophes. Catastrophes, uh, it's the same thing. So if if you know this is this is probable in in your area, so you can put in place some some measures to to deal with this when when it's happening. Market developments, so that's why it's not uh, in, in bold. It's it's more difficult because uh, also the the order is changing slightly, but the first uh, five ones are are in place since uh, three or four years now. So they haven't changed. It's it's the last ones that that haven't changed and. Uh, so also you see market development, so it's difficult to, to do anything against this. Um, but also you can do a couple of things, but it's more, more difficult because uh, you 
you never know something something is in, inventing some something somebody is inventing something which is uh, completely uh, making uh, um, superflu um, unnecessary the, the the goods you're you're selling now so this uh, these are things you, you you can't normally not deal very much with um, change in legislation regulation regulation so yeah so these, these are things normally which come from from a longer term so you can do anything something against this fire explosion it's so like like natural catastrophes um, new technologies uh, too because also you see see the development on the market what is happening so you can deal with um, loss of reputation too um, and then the last two ones, political risks. So it's the same thing like with market developments. You, you never know what's what's happening with the next uh, election or in, in countries which are, which are in less stable uh, situations. Also, you, you never know what's what's happening tomorrow if, uh, I don't know, military is taking responsibility for uh, for the government or, or whatever. So these are risks you you, you can, yeah, you, ca you can't really deal with in advance. Um, and the climate change, uh, also, it's it's quite difficult because uh, also yeah, more, more or less every two three months there are different uh, ideas what's what's happening with the climate. But uh, yeah, no, nobody knows really. Um, so, but but if you also, also see, see this list of list of risks um, which uh, which companies are, are afraid of, um, and then you see how they how they how they deal with. Um, so it's more they 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 they, they remain afraid, but. They don't do so much against it in a in a in an integrated in an integrated way. So that's these are this was to have an idea what what are the risks what what are what are the risks uh, a lot of companies are, are thinking about and and uh, um, now it's the other side uh, how, how is it handled? So if you if you look how management systems uh, so like information management uh, quality management uh, business continuity management compliance management data protection management environmental management and then all these management systems which exist uh, in in the in the iso catalog and and a lot of others um how how they are implemented so there are a couple of um, management systems in parallel and then you have a ism you have a BCM and you have a compliance management. So every every system is implemented in parallel. And as, as you see also here, it's, it's only a small part which is overlapping. So if it's already implemented in a good way, they are using the same document management. But uh, even this is not uh, always sure. <coughs> um, <clears throat> <clears throat> so then uh, we we made a we made a, a short study in Germany, and so. Uh, we asked uh, some some 300 companies uh, took two questions. Um, so one question wa was uh, are there processes and pro procedures to manage uh, respective interfaces and overlaps in operation of the different subdisciplines? So subdisciplines means uh, the different management systems you are you are using. And as you can see, the only 13% said yes, we are doing this, and uh, all all the others was uh, partially or or no. Um, so 16% not, not at all, and uh, also we asked only companies uh, which which had at least uh, two or, two or three management systems in place. So if you ask a company which has only I don't know quality management, so the answer is always no. So it will not uh, be a good statistic. Um, and so you see, there are not so many companies um, which which are really uh, using the the management systems in a in a in a in a connected way, or in an integrated way. Um, and uh, also, the other question was if they have some some projects or are projects realized, so any type of project separate and delimited from other subdomains of information security. So that means, if if they if they if they, they are um, doing some projects, they take uh, they take into account um, the, the existing uh, rules and the existing management systems, um, and uh, so also this was. was uh, really surprising so 20 percent said no we never do this so they just make a project but they don't take into account um, existing um, existing management systems and uh, only 16 percent uh, said we are doing this uh, always with integrated so that means they're always well organized and this is more or less corresponding to the to the 13 percent which say we have we have already integrated management um integrated management system approach um and so, as you can see, the others are doing this more, more or less, um, depending on whatever. Um, <coughs> so, ah, I see, I made a K instead of a C. 
Um, so is this effective? Maybe, but is it efficient? Uh, I'm not sure um, to, to, to work in this way. So um, if, if you see here uh, in, in the center is, is a business unit, unit which, which is always uh, the, the part of interest um, re regarding, uh, regarding any, any type of management system you, you make in place. And then you have just two examples. So you have business continuity management and, and information security management. And uh, then you see that, that uh, the tasks which, which have to, to be done within each management system. And so you say in the BCM, you make a business, a BIA, the business impact analysis. Then, then you, you see for the requirements, you make some self-assessments, and you define the responsibilities and all these things which, are, which, are, um, which have to be done in, in, in this type of project. And then you make the same thing. You make information security. And then you make, in place of the business impact analysis, you make the protection requirement impact analysis, and then you make the same. You, you look for the requirements, you make the self-assessments, the responsibilities. So you, you do this n times. So you have n, sys n management systems, and or n, so you do n, n times uh, more or less the same things, and uh, yeah, always with the same business units, mostly. Um, so I think this is not not very very efficient, um, and so it's just to to show you then. It's all the business units in the same approach as we saw with the two examples. So every management system um, is, is coming to the business units and asking them the same things and, and doing the same things. And uh, also mainly with a problem, with, with a with point of view from there, with a point of view from there, with a point of view from there. And uh, so they even can, can't, can't uh, main, mostly they can't recycle the things they have done for another management system. So they have to do it in another way because uh, there is no integrated approach. Um, I just see what is important for IT service continuity, and then I see just what is important for information security, and uh, so it makes it's it's, it's in, in reality it's it's really like this. As big as the organization is, um, the, the most probable it is that it is work that it works like this, um, and uh, also. Um, Big organizations are, are doing a lot of things to be compliant because there, there are some um, external requirements um, to, 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 to have a certification of, uh, of, of, of um, information security, of a certification of quality management, of a certification of environmental management, of a certification of energy management. Um, so they need all these certifications to be compliant and to, 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 to have the right to, to operate on the market. Um, and then there are some other companies which have even more regulations, like, like on the banking sector. And, and uh, it's not only in Germany with the BaFin, but in all, all other, at least European countries, here you have a, you have a controlling authority which is saying you have to do this and, and you have to do some special things with management. And so they are compliant to everything, but at least it doesn't help the company. So everything's fine. So you have a GRC, you have uh, it, it, no good governance, you have uh, no, no good risk management, but you are compliant. So everything's fine. Um, and so everybody is, uh, is happy and uh, that's it. But if, if you look really from, from that, does it help the company? Uh, no, and uh, is it is it efficient? Uh, neither. Um, and uh, so that's as, as, as I said. So ev everybody is dealing uh, with with risk management in in his in his own uh, in his own way. Um, and so um, so data protection has has, for example, a, a point of view on, on on data breaches, on incidents in in data protection. So they are, this is main risk, and so they are dealing with this in type of risk management. In compliance management, they want to to uh, try to avoid any type of contraventions. Uh, in service management, uh, the main risk is to, to 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 have less incidents and and to have no no outages of IT systems. In information security management, uh, one part is uh, to to avoid cyber attacks or to deal to deal with them and and so on. And uh, so everybody has his own risks, and so sometimes also there are different risks risk evaluation and risk management methods within one organization. So even if you have a type of central operational risk management, um, um, then all these management systems sometimes do, do its own approach. And also, for example, if you look at ISO 27001, uh, they, they have especially a special part 27005 um, to, to how, how to deal uh, with, with uh, six, uh, risk management and information security. So this is also the supporting this, this approach additionally. So this is, there are plans in the, in the ISO organization to, to, um, to delete these, these uh, specific risk management uh, substandards, but currently it's, it's, it's like this. And uh, so uh, this, this comes, or this leads to a situation, situation sim similar like this. So I have 
risk disclosure or risk re risk management in, in different ways in, 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 in one and the same organization. <clears throat> <clears throat> so the other the other thing uh, which uh, which is not very very lucky normally is uh, if if you think of operating a management system so this means uh, operating a management system this needs people this needs tools this needs processes and and, and so on and uh, so also if, if you operate them or introduce them in a separate way so then you have a couple of people which are just dealing with uh, information security a couple of people just dealing with compliance a couple of people just dealing with quality but. Uh, don't talk with each other. Um, so it's, it's better not to talk with them because uh, then, then maybe I should change something or whatever. I could have a problem with the next certification because I'm changing things and, and, and so on. So it means uh, you have a lot of people which are doing more or less the same thing, um, just with a slightly other focus at the end. Um, so also, this is not not uh, not very very efficient. And and, and if you, if you are just in your your bull in your area in your compartment um, come, come out of it it's better um, so that's that's uh, why we said the, the idea is um, if, if, if you set up a resilience framework um, the central point should be a centralized risk management um, so that means uh, just just have one risk management for for every type of, of, of risk you're dealing with in the company and this could be within management systems this could also be with, within for, for example if you look at IT operations and you introduce agile processes also you always have latest in the change management part you have you have a part of risk evaluation so you always should uh, should uh, apply and, and use the same t risk methods you should also uh, have the same estimation of risks and, and everybody should should have the same point of view what what is a risk for for the company and not only what is a risk for for my for my small part so um you you, you should you should do this um then the next step is then you say you have a centralized uh, risk uh, risk um, management and then you can begin to use synergies between the different um between the different um, management systems um and and between the different processes and then you begin to to communicate which 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 is other um, between the management systems between, with, with central risk management and, and and all these things and uh, at the end um, when when you implement the whole framework at the end uh, you will come to a to a to a solution um, where where you can yeah where you can um, where you can what is it in English where you can set up a, a type of, 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 of centralized uh, management system department. So not, not as, as today in the mass, you have a quality manager, you have an information security manager, you have whatever, but then you only have a, have a, have a manager which is responsible for all the management systems to coordinate them and, 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 and to work with them and, and to, 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 to assure that they're working good together and, and, and everything is, is handled in a good way. And then you have some, some specific people which are dealing with, uh, with the specificities of data protection or information security or whatever. Um, but there's a centralized responsibility for, for all the management systems within, within your organization. Um, so this is the, the integrated approach. Um, also ISO, ISO is, 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 is going in, in this direction uh, also with, uh, with the management system. So if, if you look at the, at the development uh, over, over the last years, then you see they, they, they are using today a, a common part for, 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 uh, for, the, for the management systems, for, for the documenting, for, for uh, document management and all these things, so which, which are really common to, to the things. But then also you have to make the next step and this is common in the in the in the standards, but then you have also implemented in in the same way. Otherwise, uh, it's fine, but it doesn't help. <clears throat> and the other advantage is, and then at the end, um, then you make uh, instead of the as, as we've seen before, instead of the n uh, analysis you make, then you make one one integrated anal analysis, um, um, and you you have only only uh, so so you have less charge on the business units because. Uh, before you have thought uh, of, of what, what, what do you need from the business units in, in, in total for, for all the management systems you, you are dealing with, um, what are the requirements, which, which are self-assessments, which, which have to be done and so on. And uh, so maybe they are, this, this type is then, then is, is slightly larger than, than every separate um, approach, as every separate pro project you make. But uh, at the end, uh, if you accumulate all the small projects, at the end it will be more, more effective and less, uh, 
and, and smaller than, than, than all the other things. And the business units will say thank you to you um, because uh, uh, they don't have every week uh, uh, analysis questions, audit or, or whatever, because uh, then it's bundled and uh, it's, it's a better approach. Um, and also from the from the resource uh, side and from the from the efficient uh, uh, side, then you say you have only one one management systems and uh, operating a management system, operating one management system or two or three or four or five, um, is not doubling, tripling or whatever the, the people. So then you just have to to add some 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 small amount of human resources to, to this. So, so this will will operate all the systems uh, in, a, in, a, in a more efficient way. Um, also at the end, um, if, if you do this approach and you can, if you think about tools, you just have one tool where you, where you modelize all, all your management systems and you don't have a tool for data protection management and you have a tool for information security and you have a tool for quality management and you have N tools and in every tool you, you introduce 90% uh, of the same data. Um, so this is also then, then you have an integrated approach. So this will be um, more, more efficient um, for the company, and this will really save save money at the end. So, it's with this approach, so it's uh, it's protecting it's really protecting your com the company. Uh, so these are really the advantages. It's it's saving money because it's more efficient, and uh, not only on the central part, also on the on the business unit part. And uh, um, the only disadvantage on the other side, so it's slightly more complex um, for 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 the people which which are dealing with the management systems because they have to. To think in in different areas, and I think also this is this is the main problem today that there are not so many people which are which are able to think in a in a larger way. Um, so just thinking in in my tunnel, or um, and uh, this this makes it difficult to to convince the people that it's a good approach on the on the management level. Is always the answer if if you present this is this is approach to 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 a CEO or to other top managers. Um, they're saying it's a good idea, I like it, and so on. And if you want to go into reality, the main problem. On one hand, within the organization, to find people which are which understands this approach um, and which which go with this approach, um, there are not so many. And also on the on the consulting side, also there are not so many people on the on the road uh, which which understands this approach and which can can think larger and 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 go outside of their box. So this is the main the main obstacle to to go this way from 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 my experience. Um, inside the company, I understand because people uh, are afraid of, of losing their job or maybe just changing their job, um, which which is sometimes a, a problem. Which I <coughs> observed also in some some special parts in Germany. We're doing this in 30 years like this, so don't touch at this. Um, that's a very funny approach. Um, but uh, so this is inside the organization. It's understandable, um, and uh, but then you also you have to develop the people that say that they will. Will do it and say we'll um, work in this way. Okay, so have a good conference. Mm -hmm.